Folks, I love this title, the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget. Sounds like something out of the Eisenhower administration. Joining us now, their force, Maya McGinnis. Good noon to you. What, How are you? What is the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget? Oh, well, uh, other than a laugh line occasionally, I'm afraid, because we're not doing such a great job these days. It's a great group where the board of directors are all the folks who run OMB and CBO and the Fed and the Treasury Department, the budget committees, right. in the past. And they stay involved trying to urge uh, policymakers and their former colleagues to really be more responsible in budgeting. So Doug, Doug we're Elm doing our best. Very good. Doug Elmendorf now runs CBO. He just put out his thing that says 2021, it gets ugly. Do you agree with Dr. Elmendorf that it gets ugly in 2021 or does it get uglier sooner? Oh, I think we're at, we're at ugly right now because uh, markets are forward looking. And so when you look where we're headed in terms of debt levels, Nobody knows what the tipping point is when the debt becomes too much, but it basically is problematic uh, whenever markets lose confidence, and that could come at any moment. You don't want to be rushing uh, to find out exactly when that tipping point is. So I think there's no denying, and CBO would agree, we're already in problem territory, and things get much, much worse going out. That was their long-term report where they're looking where things are in the future, and it's it's clearly unsustainable. Uh, let's bring up a comment from Maya uh, here, folks, on a recent op-ed. There we go. What, what needs to come out of the debt ceiling, I believe crisis is the word we left off, plans to prioritize interest payments above other obligations are worrisome because they would require the United States to not make good on other legal commitments. I got my first gray hair, Maya, waiting for my mother to calm down about the debt ceiling. This is the ultimate cry wolf. Why is this time different if we've been doing this for a gazillion years? Well, that's right. The debt ceiling has been something that has lent itself to political theater for decades and decades yeah. now, where we always have to raise it and parties always scream about how important it is to be fiscally responsible. They don't make changes to the policies and they do lift the debt ceiling. And usually, uh, it becomes the responsibility of the majority party to take the hard vote and, and vote to raise it. This time it's different for two reasons. One, there are serious uh, commitments not to actually increase the debt ceiling by enough people that it's going to be a much harder vote than it has been in the past. And let me be clear, we do have to lift the debt ceiling. As somebody who believes strongly and firmly that we need to change our budgetary ways, failing to lift the debt ceiling would potentially be catastrophic mm -hmm. and it would make all of these things much worse. But at the same time, you also do want to make changes to the budget. And that's another reason it's different this time. We are on the precipice of deciding whether we're going right. to make fundamental changes to our budget <clears throat> or kick it till after the election. Uh, and so we have a lot of big choices yeah. facing at us right I now. Th I thought it was 50-50. Rex has demanded this is a break exclusive. Maya McGinnis says we have to raise the debt ceiling. That is break exclusive. Okay, here's a long-term chart. Oh, beautiful for spacious debt. Look at that chart. This is from IMF, Carlo Cottarelli and his crew. And there we are in the 60s and we get responsible. And then there's the buildup and we get responsible again, partially with that surplus. And look at the explosion. Maya, what insight can you give us for the why of that explosion in debt? Is it our two wars? Is it our health plan? Can we blame the parties? What's the why behind that surge in our gross debt? Well, listen, I think there's finger pointing that belongs in every direction. So what happened is that when the economy was strong and we should have been running surpluses, we ran deficits instead. We then were hit with a huge economic downturn and both the results of that downturn and the cost of dealing with it. So multiple stimulus measures, those added to the debt. The most problematic problem, though, is looking forward, where we're headed. And that's a result of aging of society and growing health care costs, the effect that has on interest payments as well. And those things will start to squeeze out the rest of the budget and put huge pressures <clears throat> on right. our budget. So we went into this from a, a period of weakness instead of strength. We're hit with some very hard things. We didn't pay for policies along the way, including two wars and a prescription drug program and offsetting all the tax cuts. So pretty much we have just layered on program after Maya, program in a debt financed way. You got a bunch of people helping you at your committee for a responsible federal budget. Where's Scoop Jackson? Where's Daniel Patrick Moynihan yeah. and others like on the Republican side? Where are they? Where are those people well, today? It, that I mean, this has become a far more political environment than it ever has before, and things are dug in. So the notion that there's no flexibility on taxes makes it much harder than the realistic recognition that people are coming to that 
we can actually reform taxes in a way that would be good for the code and raise revenues to help close the fiscal gap. That's going to have to be part of it. On the left, though, we're also seeing sort of an entrenched feeling on entitlements that people are starting, responsible people are starting to realize we have to reform entitlements, Social Security, Medicare, and we can do so in a way that if we do so quickly, <clears throat> we can still protect right. everybody who depends on those programs. But there's no free lunches here, and we still have two political parties that are hoping for a free lunch all too often. What we really need is people coming to the table, compromising, looking at all parts of the right. budget, because okay. that's what's going to be necessary, and we need leadership. Maya, thank you so much. Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget. we got to get her back on to talk. She claims she's neutral. 